and it's kind of a complete meal. I mean, I guess the small amount of green onions in there doesn't really count as a vegetable, so I do recommend you having like some sort of stir-fried veggies or something on the side, but if you're somebody who's not really into vegetables, um, this is kind of a, a semi-complete meal. Hmm. We're gonna make fried rice, but before we get started, I'm gonna start with a really, really simple recipe for the soup that comes along with the fried rice, but obviously we're not a ramen shop and we're not making soup from scratch, from stock, and cooking it down for like days and days and days. Um, and this is a very simple substitute recipe for that soup. And once we finish that soup, then we'll get into the fried rice. So let's get started. We're gonna start with 500 milliliters of just plain water, which is a little bit more than two cups. So it's like two and an eighth of a cup, but you know, it's a soup. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like you're baking. If you wanna do two cups of water, that's totally fine. If you wanna do two and a quarter cups of water, that's totally fine as well. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start with that and put that over medium heat. To that, we're going to add just a tiny pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. Now, in most Japanese uh, kitchens, you'll find white pepper. Um, I tend to not keep a lot of white pepper in the kitchen, so I'm just using regular um, black pepper from the supermarket. And you're going to add a tablespoon of soy sauce. and two teaspoons of torigara. So you've seen me use um, torigara chicken soup stock powder in a couple of other recipes in the past. This is the same thing, but it just comes in a paste form. So, um, and it actually has chicken fat in it. So it's, to me, it's a lot more flavorful than the powder version, but the powder version is sometimes a little bit easier to find. So two teaspoons, kind of looks almost like peanut butter. There's like oil kind of floating on the top. If you can't find torigara soup powder or torigara soup paste like this, then just um, use a chicken bouillon cube. And that should work just fine. Mix this together. Make sure that that paste gets diluted. Almost like miso. It's almost like a the same texture as miso soup. Okay, and once that has kind of melted throughout the water and the soy sauce, we're going to add um, chopped green onions. Now, in the States, these are what you would call green onions or scallions, right? In Japan, we have something called a Tokyo long onion, uh, Tokyo naganegi, um, but it's basically the same thing. You know, I mean, it kind of grows the same. It's just a little bit thicker. Um, I think it's just a harvesting issue. Um, but we use Tokyo long onions for all sorts of dishes that don't require it to be minced. We actually will cut it into larger pieces and put in things like hot pot or sukiyaki. And you can kind of just kind of munch on it um, as a cooked vegetable, as opposed to just a flavoring agent. But in this soup, we're actually just mincing a Tokyo naganegi and putting that in here. And this is the same onion that we will be using when we do our fried rice, when we make our chahan. We bring our heat down a little bit. Bring it down to a simmer. And then as a final flavoring agent, we're going to add just a tiny little bit of sesame oil. 
And sesame oil is one of those things that kind of changes the flavor of something from Japanese flavored to Chinese flavored, especially in terms of like a Japanese palate as we kind of recognize uh, sesame oil as more of a Chinese flavor. So uh, there's no real measurement to this. You're just adding just a, just a little swirl of sesame oil. And it's kind of amazing how the minute you add the sesame oil, the soup, the smell of it changes from something that's just a broth to something that is a lot more, like it's got some depth to it. And I am going to give this a tiny little taste. That smells so good. Yep, and it just tastes like a really thin version of a um, like a like a soy sauce ramen broth. But you know, don't get me wrong. This is not a substitute for ramen broth. Um, if you can't find any of the ingredients, I think the closest thing that you're going to be able to find is like your packets of French onion soup mix. <laughs> um, make that and maybe add just like a, like a quart, quarter teaspoon of soy sauce to it and then like a little bit of sesame oil. And I think that you'll end up with a very similar plate flavor profile, even though it's not exactly the same. So now that we've made this soup, we're gonna put it aside and let me clean this up and I'll be right back to start our cha -han. So I've just kind of put the soup on the stove in the back there uh, just to kind of keep warm while we're making this fried rice, uh, also known as chahan in Japan. Um, we're using not necessarily day old rice. So if you use day old rice, which is kind of the traditional recommended rice that you use, you're going to end up with a rice that's kind of dry, kind of, um, I don't know, it, it doesn't kind of stick together, which is, which is good for fried rice. But the traditional way that I was taught how to make fried rice at the Chinese restaurant in Chinatown is you go ahead and cook, especially in Japan, because we use short grain sticky rice, um, is go ahead and cook your rice a little on the harder side. So if you have like the one cup measurement, um, maybe just a little bit under that line on the, on the rice cooker. And the minute it's done, you take it out of the rice cooker. You don't let it sit there and keep it on warm. You take it out of there right away, transfer it into a metal bowl. And you just add like, like a drizzle, like a teaspoon or two of vegetable oil, vegetable oil to the rice. And you go ahead and cut it through. And what happens is then it doesn't stick to the bowl first off, which is always a good thing. Um, but you also get rice that is still fluffy on the inside, but each, each kind of grain is slightly coated with some oil. So then when you fry it, you get fried rice that is still, you see the individual rice bits. It's not all clumpy together, but the inside of each rice grain <laughs> is fluffy and super tasty. So here we've got about a cup and a half to two cups uh, short grain Japanese rice that's gotten left at room temperature. I didn't throw it in the fridge or anything. We start the frying pan and I'm going to set this aside for now. And we're going to start with our sausage. So the protein in fried rice is up to you. If you want to use shrimp, you could use shrimp to make shrimp fried rice. You can do chicken fried rice for this recipe. Um, Everything else remains the same. The protein is totally up to you. I'm using uh, a Japanese, what we call a wina, which is a wiener, <laughs> which is a Jap uh, the Japanese version of a German sausage. Um, I think we could use like cocktail wieners in the States, um, but you can also use chashu, like the Chinese roast pork that you saw me make in a previous episode that you could make in a rice cooker. So you can let that cool and chop that up really fine as well. But for this recipe, today we're using Japanese style German sausage. 
that is chopped really fine. I'm not adding any oil to the pan because one, this is a nonstick pan, but also the sausage also has a really decent amount of fat. And the rice already has fresh oil, oil in it. We're gonna add our Uh, one tablespoon of our Japanese long onion that we used in our soup. And you can also use like Chinese sweet sausage in here if you'd like. Honestly, the protein is up to you. If you want to go with the vegetarian option, you can omit the meat proteins altogether. Once that's kind of cooked through, you don't really want this to burn, you're going to take an egg, but instead of scrambling the egg, I'm actually putting the whole egg in by itself as a whole egg, and then I'm just kind of chopping it up in the frying pan so that you get little bits of egg white and egg yolks that are cooked kind of separately. And you want to cook the egg until it's cooked dry. And just use your spatula to kind of just break it up. To that, we're going to add our rice. And up till now, we haven't added any flavorings or anything like that. It's really just uh, the egg, onions, and sausage. And you can tell that, you know, the rice hasn't gotten all clumpy because each piece has a little bit of oil already on it. And this makes for a less oily fried rice as well, um, as opposed to pouring oil into a pan and then adding cold rice to it, um, which has a tendency, I think, I think you get bits of, of rice that get oilier than others. And it's kind of hard to gauge how much oil you actually need, so. So to this, now we're gonna add our flavorings. And it's a really lightly flavored soy sauce, uh, really lightly flavored fried rice. So you're gonna add a teaspoon of salt, some cracked black pepper or white pepper if you have it. You're going to add a teaspoon of soy sauce. Like I said, you're not trying to make a brown soy sauce here. It's just lightly flavored, just enough to get the soy sauce um, kind of scent throughout the whole thing. And then two final ingredients to this, which is, so you can add, you can use Chinese cooking wine if you'd like. Um, I don't usually hold on to a lot of Chinese cooking wine, so I just use sake, which is a Japanese cooking wine. <laughs> so you're going to add uh, a teaspoon of sake to this. You'll notice I'm not adding, because I'm not adding a lot of wet uh, flavoring agents, the rice doesn't get all soggy and sticky. It kind of stays light. And I don't know if flaky is the, the word to describe fried rice, but um, in, in Japanese, it would be called 
para para. <laughs> and para para literally means, you know, like um, flaky. So you want the individual rice pieces to be para para. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off. And we're going to add our final ingredient which is sesame oil, which is the same thing that we did for our soup. So sesame oil, which is surprisingly hard for me to say, is again, you're adding just a little bit, just for as a flavoring agent, not as a cooking agent. Um, so probably about like a teaspoon or worth, and then you're just gonna kind of toss that throughout. There's no ginger in this. There's no garlic in this. It's a very um, lightly flavored fried rice because it's the kind of fried rice that you would have alongside like a bowl of ramen or um, or heavier, he more heavy flavored. Is that how you say it? Heavier flavored, <laughs> heavier flavored Chinese dishes don't necessarily need to combat a heavily flavored fried rice. The traditional method of serving this is to put this into a small rice bowl and then turn it upside down onto a plate. So I am going to clear the cooking area and get this set up for our taste test as usual. And I'll show you how to plate this and, and serve it with the soup. So we'll be right back. I have put the soup in a tiny little bowl on the side. And I put the chahan, the Japanese style Chinese fried rice, the yang chow fried rice, uh, into a similar size bowl. I've got a plate. I'm going to see if I can <laughs> do this without messing it up too much. So I'm going to put the plate on top, tip it over. Now, because the rice has got oil all the way around it, it should just release really easy. So. <laughs> super happy um, and yeah so there's our fried rice there's our Chinese kind of ramen stock mock soup um, we've got the Chinese spoons uh, although it's not a requirement <laughs> although this is usually how it's served in uh, in Chinese restaurants in Japan there's also many uh, Chinese restaurants here in the States um, but if it's difficult to eat with this because it can be <laughs> Just use a regular spoon. No one cares. Um, the only other thing that is a little bit different about Japanese Chinese restaurants compared to American Chinese restaurants is that there is usually, well, this is probably the same anywhere, is a little bottle of soy sauce, but also a bottle of white distilled vinegar. It's an unflavored vinegar. It's meant, it's meant to cut through the oil um, in most Chinese dishes. So if you get like, I don't know, like a, like a shrimp and bok choy or like a broccoli beef or like some some other like you know like uh, vegetables and lobster sauce um if it tends to feel oily as a mouthfeel we'll usually put a little bit of white vinegar on top and so i grew up putting white vinegar on my uh chinese fried rice so i'm gonna do that here but start with a little bit of soy sauce and i don't know if you know most of these bottles have a spigot and then there's like a little tiny hole in the back and that's where you put your finger and that, that kind of helps you not have to pour soy sauce all over so just a little bit of soy sauce and a little bit of white vinegar and i think the white vinegar really does brighten up the flavors a little bit Plus I like, I like sour things as a general rule, so. Get a spoonful of this. Mm. It's so good. It's, it's a really light flavor. It's not heavy. Um, like a lot of Americanized Chinese uh, fried rices are. 
it would go really well with like a plate of like you know stir fried veggies or some egg bouillon or some other Chinese dish. But it's also <laughs> it's also really good at room temperature. So this kind of fried rice is really good in a bento box the next day as a substitute or an alternative to just plain white rice. I'm gonna have some of this soup. Mm. The soup is a little bit saltier than the fried rice, so it's a great complement. And it's kind of a complete meal. I mean, I guess the small amount of green onions in there doesn't really count as a vegetable, so I do recommend you having like some sort of stir-fried veggies or something on the side. But if you're somebody who's not really into vegetables, um, this is kind of a, a semi-complete meal. Mm. The rice isn't sticky. You can feel every grain while you're chewing. Um, but as you chew, every grain, you can tell, is soft on the inside. It's not hard and dry. Um, that whole coating the rice with oil before you fry it is such a great idea. And everybody has a very different way of making fried rice. There are some Japanese chefs that will add the rice with the egg and stir all that together before they put that in the frying pan. And it makes a very different kind of fried rice. Um, I personally like having larger pieces of egg and some egg yolks and some egg whites kind of scattered throughout my fried rice. So to me, this is my preferred method. Um, but yeah.